Hi there! I'm Adrien Modui for ANPNF and today we'll be covering some of the basics of astrophotography after some of my friends asked me to make a video about it. Let's jump right in. Photographing the night sky or astrophotography is probably one of the hardest uh, fields uh, of photography that's out there with macro photography um, because it requires a lot of patience and the motto is go out there and try uh, there's no rule I started four years ago and uh, I'm still in the process of learning and I think you could say that uh, even the professionals and the, the best astrophotographers out there they're still in the process they're always constantly in the process of learning because you can always find new techniques to uh, perfect your pictures and the goal of today is just to give you a few tips to get you started on your astrophotography journey. Now in the very first place we'll be talking exclusively about the camera and why do I want to focus on the camera only? It's because before considering all the other components and materials of astrophotography like tripods or anything you need to get to know your camera really well and I'm here with my Sony A7S and um, I want to show you a little magic you will have for astrophotography to switch from the auto mode that you might use for landscape photography or everyday photography and you will need to switch all the way to the M mode, as in manual. Now the manual mode may seem really scary, but it's actually not, and it actually proves that you know your camera really well. Uh, you also have other modes that you can switch to, uh, S, A, P, or bulb. We'll be talking about them in another video. If you're wondering what type of camera you should choose, you should probably consider buying a DSLR, which is a camera with a, a mirror, or a mirrorless camera, like this one, like the Sony A7S. But in any case, not a compact camera, because most of them don't let you use the manual mode because they don't have any. You should also consider the size of your sensor that will determine the size of your photos. You can either choose full frame format or a crop sensor aka APS-C that will zoom in approximately 1.5 to 1.6 the size of a full frame. The three components that you can adjust yourself under the manual mode are the camera sensitivity to light or ISO, the shutter speed or the time of exposure that controls how much light is coming onto the sensor and the last one is the aperture which is a ring that controls also how much light is coming in. Now those three components have other kind of side effects that you need to know and are super important for astrophotography but let's dive in into each individual component. The ISO corresponds to the sensor sensitivity to light. You can adjust the ISO on your camera from dials or the menu. If you lower the ISO, you lower the sensor sensitivity to light, so your image will be less exposed. Conversely, as you go up, the sensitivity increases so your pictures will be brighter. On most cameras, you can go from 50 ISO to 25,600, but some cameras like this one allow you to go well beyond that. But here's the trick. As you go up in ISO, you will also increase the sensor's noise level. You can see here those little red and green pixels that pepper the LCD screen as I dial up the ISO. For astrophotography, you will be shooting at high ISOs, but the undesirable noise level will increase quickly as well turning your photos awful, so you need to find a compromise ISO. Depending on your shutter speed, your aperture and focal length, and also your camera sensor sometimes, 
A safe range for astrophotography can be anywhere between 1600 and 6400. Some cameras have a noise threshold that won't allow you to go over 3200, so you will need to adjust the other components as well. The shutter speed is the amount of time during which the camera allows the light to enter through the aperture and into the sensor. It's also called the exposure time. As you shorten the shutter speed, the less time the light can come in, so you will have guessed, the darker your images will be. As you increase the exposure time, you also increase the brightness of your shots as a result. Shutter speed is the component that you can bump up a lot in astrophotography, but there is a threshold at which you will need to stop, failing which you will get streaky stars, but we will get into that a bit later. You will usually need a shutter speed ranging from a second to 30 or 40 seconds, depending on your focal length, your other components. Here you can see me opening the sensor for light for 5 seconds. You can see that the shutter lets in a lot of light for the sensor to gather and then shuts, resulting in brighter images. However, try and watch what happens if the camera encounters the slightest vibration during this precious seconds. You will get a blurry image. That's the reason why you will need to keep your camera stable while it's open. You will have to use a tripod and a remote control, or the delay option of your camera to avoid touching your camera and get undesired blur. As the earth rotates but your camera stays at the same position, you cannot open your shutter forever or you will have star trails, which can give a cool effect but if you need clean and sharp stars, you need stability. In order to calculate your maximum exposure time, knowing the focal length of your lens, you can use a well-known rule. You have to divide 500 by the focal length of your lens. For example, if I shoot with 24mm lens, I can open my shutter speed up to 500 divided by 24, which is about 20 seconds. I usually tend to take a lesser value to ensure that no trailing will appear so I would use 15 or 16 seconds with a 24mm lens. Even though you can never totally suppress trailing, you can minimize it. But be careful, that's when knowing if your camera is a full frame or crop sensor is important. If you have a full frame, you can apply the rule directly. If you have a crop sensor, you will have to multiply your focal length by 1.5 or 1.6 to get it right. So again, if I'm shooting on a 24mm lens with a crop sensor, I will open up to 500 divided by 24 times 1.5, which is about 14 seconds. The aperture is a metallic ring made of blades inside the lens that slide onto each other to either open or close, just like the iris opening or closing, causing your pupil, the hole in your eye, to either contract or dilate. The opening controls how much light passes through to the sensor. The aperture opens and closes using increments of 50% area loss or gain from one to another. These increments are called f-stops and are important to control the incoming light. Once again, a wide aperture or a low f-stop will allow a lot of light onto the sensor and on the contrary, a narrow aperture or a high f-stop won't allow too much light. As photographing the night sky is challenging due to the lack of light, you will need to open up your aperture wide to gather a lot of light. That is why you need to have a lens with a very low maximum aperture or a minimum f-stop. Generally speaking, the minimum native f-stop should range between 1.0 and 2.8, which will help gather a lot of light. However, and like the two other settings, there's a catch. The aperture also controls the depth of field, where the subject is in focus. I took a picture at maximum and minimum aperture to show you the difference. When the aperture is wide open, you gather more light, but your depth of field is considerably decreased, making the area in focus very shallow. You can see here that the center of the image is in focus, but the corners are way out of focus. When the aperture is at its narrowest, the light is very dim, but the depth of field is very wide. Everything on the image is in focus. In other words, 
Using the widest aperture will give you a very hard time getting the stars in focus, especially at night. Not to mention three other nasty side effects, such as distortion, chromatic aberration, and vignetting in the corners of your images. See here a couple of examples. With an aperture wide open, stars tend to get unsharp and a light fall off appears from the center to the corners. Sometimes the edge of the stars are green or purple. In order to correct all that, you generally need to bump up your aperture two or three f-stops higher. So, if I'm shooting on a lens that allows a minimum native f-stop of 1.4, for example, I will increase it to 2.8 to get sharper stars. Lenses with high minimum f-stops like f3.5 are generally why most beginners won't get bright astrophotos to start with. Now an extra accessory that you will absolutely need is a sturdy tripod because the exposure time will be long between 5 and 30 seconds as I was telling you earlier. The camera will be open and if the camera is moving or if the object in front of it is moving then you will have a nasty trail that you don't want on your astrophotos. So you will need to attach your camera to a tripod, you can find some really cheap on Amazon. Um, so you now I recommend ball head tripod because you can move your camera around like this without compromising um, the angle that you want to shoot in. When you're finished finding your angle, you just adjust and you're ready to shoot. You will also need a remote intervalometer that you can find really cheap on Amazon. Make sure that is the right mount. Uh, so this one is for Sony cameras that you have to attach to it. Now make sure your camera is set on bulb so the camera can control it. Now we'll be talking lenses. What kind of lens will we have to choose? Well, since we're talking about just single shot astrophotography, you might have to ban these long focal lengths, like 100 millimeters. Even on a full frame, 100 millimeters will give you a portion of the night sky that is not really interesting to work with. So you might want to switch for shorter uh, focal lengths. For example, um, this Samyang 24 millimeters is the perfect wide angle that you need to get beautiful shots of the Milky Way. And the good thing with those uh, wide angle lenses is that they allow a wide aperture which you will need to get as much light as possible. So Samyang 24mm f1.4 is to me one of the best lenses for straw photography. You can also find Samyang Rokinon 2.8mm. Uh, now 14mm is such a wide angle of view that it will eventually have some distortion and vignetting on the edges in the corners of your images. Uh, and we'll do this fisheye effect, but um, if you want to have like the biggest portion of the Milky Way in the night sky in all in one shot, including also foreground, then you might want to consider those 14, 12, even 10 millimeters sometimes um, and add them to your uh, list. I 
found a spot where there was a little bit less wind so you can hear me when I talk um, so here I have my rig so my tripod I have my camera here and right there it's ready to shoot on the tripod directed at the Milky Way so here are the lens I have a Sony 28 millimeters f 2.0 which will help me gather a lot of light um, and I'm shooting on the uh, Sony a7s so and I also have my intervalometer uh, which is connected to my to my camera and the sturdy tripod so let's take a look at the settings so first what you want to do is to make sure you're on bulb so that your uh, intervalometer can control your camera I'm at f2.0 uh, which will help me gather a lot of light the ISO I'm going to try and go to 3200 and see what it does. Set up a um, time of exposure of, I have a 28 millimeters, so I usually go all the way to 15. The last step you need to do is to focus at night. Alright guys, I'm back home and I'm pretty content with the results. So this is the raw image straight out of the camera and uh, you can already see that the noise levels are pretty decent. Um, stars are fairly sharp even though if you look in the corners uh, you can see some star trails and distortion but that's because we're at f2.0 which is the minimal um, f-stop so it will do that on any lens or any camera. Uh, you can see the Milky Way pretty clearly. Uh, it's unedited. You can do some edits afterwards in Lightroom or any software that you use to uh, sharpen and get more clarity on the Milky Way. After you have passed this point and you've gained some experience, you can also try and raise your f-stop to get sharper stars and less distortion or uh, aberration and vignetting in the corners. Other than that, uh, it looks pretty decent to start working on it. Alright guys, thank you so much for watching my video. I hope it brought you some useful tips and techniques uh, to get you started on your astrophotography journey because to me, it's one of the most rewarding disciplines uh, of photography. You will just be amazed by how uh, beautiful the night sky is so get out there start shooting you might not be successful right away but I'm pretty sure you will be able to do it at some point you can also find a summary of all the terms and and the processes uh, to quick look in the description below also uh, I'm gonna make more tutorials and videos in the near future so uh, you are more than welcome to watch them as well so don't forget to subscribe, share, like and comment on the videos. If you have questions, please ask them in the comments below the video. I'll be seeing you very soon on www.adphotography-online.com. Take care. Bye-bye.